In this video, we're going to look at setting up your facets in Aspen. Aspen has 40 different facets that you can choose from. We load you with about 20 by default, and this is across your search results page and also your advanced search page. If you've forgotten where advanced search is, it's under your keyword search here at the bottom under advanced search. Different libraries have different facet needs, so these are completely customizable. Whatever you decide for the setup of your facets, we really just stress thinking about what is going to be the most intuitive and the most valuable for your users. If you have permissions to set up your facets, then you'll be able to find this in your Aspen administration menu, catalog grouped works, and then grouped work facets. Then you'll click into your settings for your library. I said that we have 40 different facets available for you to choose from. If you're curious where Aspen is pulling in the data for those different facets, for example, um, where in my mark data is the author information coming from? Where in my mark data is the audience information coming from? Don't forget that we have documentation linked here. So when you click on this, uh, it'll take you out to our help center where you can find definitions of all those different facets. Before we start working on this chart, all the changes that you make and updates to this chart are immediate. So typically what I do is I will have a tab open with the chart, just like you see here, and then I'll open another tab. Typically I'll start working um, just in my search results page so that I can test and see any changes that I've made. All right, so let's start working through this chart. Right at the top, these two facets, format category and available, are the only ones that have show above search results checked. That's because these two actually control the format icon toggles and the availability toggles. So that's these format icons here and these availability toggles. If you were to go ahead in the chart and uncheck this where it says show above results, these would actually disappear. So we just kind of suggest ignoring these top two scrolling past, and then working on your other facets. The first column here is that actual data source of the facet. From a drop-down menu, essentially, you're picking from the different data points. Then we have the display name and the plural display name. So this is what's actually showing up in the facet name. For example, this fiction, nonfiction facet here um, is actually the form facet, so short for literary form, but to users, it might make more sense to be displayed as fiction, nonfiction. So that's what we have here. Scrolling over the chart, we're setting up both show on results page and show on advanced search page here. So for some of these, you might decide, in this case, we have the awards facet and the item type facet and the movie ratings facet. We don't have those checked to show on our search results page, but they might be nice to have available to users in the advanced search. If we keep scrolling over, we'll see multi-select. Multi-select is exactly this. It's giving the option to select from multiple checkboxes. But for some facets, like format, it might make sense to give folks the ability to choose multiple different formats. Whereas author, they're probably just looking for one specific author. There's no checkboxes here. I will come back to can lock in a bit because I want to demo that for you. Collapse by default just means that when I perform a search, so let's just do a blank search to show you. Right now, I have it set to all of my facets being collapsed by default. It might make sense to open a few of these to guide patrons to those facets, but it also might not make sense to open them all because then it's giving a lot of data and it could overwhelm your users. But maybe something like a library branch facet or audience facet, or if you're in elementary school, you know, maybe a AR facet open might help to guide users to that facet um, to show them an example of what's available for them. The next column is use more facet pop-up. This is just enabling the pop-up so that um, in the case of a facet that has a number of different results, instead of clicking more and it expanding down the page, a pop-up will be enabled. The translate column refers to Aspen's language translation mode. Aspen has a language translation mode where you can control the language. 
we keep translation off on facet results because when you think about the amount of data that can be contained in something like a subject or a series facet, we don't want by default for Aspen to need to process all of this data. Where you may need to turn this on is if, for example, you're deciding across catalogs to change the word overdrive to something like Libby, then you may want to change this in your e-content collection facet. A note with this in translations in general are that they are a global setting. So this would be applied to all catalogs that share a server. That permission for translating is also reserved usually for just a handful of people within a library system. The sort column by default is set to by number of results. The idea here is that this is just essentially sorting by the most relevant result in that facet. Where it might make sense to switch to say alphabetically would be if you're using a facet like a library branch locations facet. And it would maybe make sense to have that in alphabetical order instead of by who owns the most copies of something. The number of results is typically set to five, which should be fine, but a use case where you might want to adjust it Again, in that case of using the library branch facet, maybe you have seven branches and it just makes sense to display them all without needing to click expand to see all. In that case, maybe changing it to seven to show all seven branches would make more sense because we always are looking for ways to save on those clicks. I had skipped over can lock. Let me demo this for you. So speaking of saving clicks, what if you have someone who is repeating the same search over and over? Like they're searching for titles all in the same format, so they just keep searching for DVD titles, or maybe you've pulled that busy shift in the children's room and you know all day you're going to be searching within the juvenile audience facet. In these cases, there is an option to enable locking down a facet. Right now, I do have can lock turned on for formats, so let me just demo that example. I'm going to click into my format facet and find my DVD. And when I click on that DVD, a little lock will pop up. If I click on that, now I have my facet locked and any search I perform will only be within this facet that I've locked down. In this case, I'm going to search for the help and there's only DVDs showing. So the book of uh, written expression of the work is not going to show. So I can just keep searching for different DVDs. Even if I log out, the next time I log in, this search will still be locked down. Until I go ahead and unlock this facet, I can remove my DVD format. And now if I search for the help, it's going to bring back all of my catalog results and not just DVDs. Other things to point out on this chart, you can change the sort order just by sliding this up and down top to bottom. And to add new, you can just click on add new, go ahead and choose your facet that you're wanting to use. And then you just start applying your display name and go through and select which things make sense for your users. Again, everything you do and save in this chart will be immediate. So you can just pop over here and make sure that that facet that you've set up is returning the results you expected.